Back here at Veterans Field for game 15 of the regular season with John Schiffner. I'm Dominic Catronio. I believe we played 15 games already. Yeah. Wow. It's blown by, hasn't it? It's unbelievable. I, I still think it was like 10 days ago. I was in Maine. It's a little warmer here, though, in Maine, huh, right? Oh, God, this we'd be sweating <laughs> sweating right now, and it's chilly right now, but, man, this would be great in Maine. Holy mackerel, it was cold this winter. Well, it's time for the manager show. We're here with John Schiffner. A 2-1 to one win in extra innings. First time we got into extras in a regulation game, that is, this season. You guys battled in that final in that final tenth inning with the run coming across. Parker Dunchy is the pinch runner. How big is it? I mean, you talked about the thin bench that you have, but having Dunchy being able to come out and run for you guys, he might have been the difference of the game with well, that was, tag up. There was no question. He, you know, I don't want to say he won the game for us, but his legs certainly helped a lot because, you know, if we leave Will there and bunt Will to second base, Will's not going to tag up and go to third on that ball. So now you get that ball in the dirt pass ball with two outs, so Will's on third. Maybe he gets in, maybe he doesn't get in. So, you know, he's only on third base in that pass ball, so it makes it easier. So, you know, Parker did a great job. And that's, again, you know, we I think we can do the same thing with Aaron McGarity. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Gallon could come in and do some of, that, some of the things that he does uh, running-wise. They're, they're athletes, and, you know, it just works out that uh, – you know, that was, I think, a good move on our part. It saved another guy on the bench. So knowing we're going into the extra innings, that gives us another bat on the bench and instead of wasting a bat as a pinch runner in that situation. So, I, you know, we were, it worked out that time. We looked good. The reason you guys were in extra innings was in the seventh inning. They scored a run after a huge triple. You decided to have the infield back still with the runner on third. Explain right. that decision. Well, there's no outs, so let's get an out, you know, and then clear the bases up. And the thought process is right there. Um, you play for the tie in the road, and you play for the win at home. Or, uh, I mean, the other way around, I should say. But uh, we, we weren't – we just felt – uh, that our pitching was good enough. We don't want to get ourselves in a situation where we're going to start a rally. So we bring the infield in. Uh, that run scores. Obviously, we're probably going to try to throw that guy out. So chances are that guy's going to go to second base. So now you put the potential winning run on second base with less than two outs. So we just said, give him the run, clear the bases off. So it's one run in, and then Jimmy did a great job. Just you know, um, limit, we call it minimizing. That was it. No more, no more runners got on while Jimmy was in the game. And you know, we bring in the rest of the guys and we get the win. You know, because we we executed, which is what we like to do. Parker's wheels help us out. Speaking of the pitching, T.J. Zwick, another great performance for him. No hitter into the sixth inning. Uh, granted, he's on an innings limit, and I know you're all about the player. How hard is it for you? I mean, seeing a kid going out there, if you were to keep it going in that sixth and seventh inning, how hard would it for you to restrain yourself? Not at all. He's coming out because that's that's a deal I made with their pitching coach and their head coach, and T.J. knows that. And quite frankly, I don't think T.J. would have cared that much because he's also you know cognizant of what they're trying to do for him as well as us. And I'm sure he would have been disappointed, but um, – uh, you know, he's thrown a lot of innings this year. We don't want to hurt a guy. So, you know, that would have been – I mean, he's pitched great. I mean, and that's that's what he wanted to come here and do is to prove he can pitch against this kind of competition. Um, it would be wonderful if he, if he goes out and throws a no-hitter and then he's, his arm is sore and he's got issues. And, you know, I, I don't think it's that important to throw a no-hitter versus, you know, have a great career. A couple of small ball tactics for you last night. The sack bunts, though, were slow to get going, but you finally laid one down in the 10th inning when it mattered. The bunting, as frustrating is, as we talked about for scouts, it's a huge part to your team, but lately it's kind of been struggling. How do you guys try to get things going again? Well, you work on it in BP. I mean, it's, you know, it, it looks like it's easy, but bunting is not easy. I mean, especially when the guy's throwing 93 at your hands, uh, it's not easy. Or they throw a nasty curveball, and, you know, you have to make a quick decision whether or not that ball is up enough that you can bunt it or you're going to whiff at it. So, you know, there's people out there who think bunting's real simple, but it's not. And do, should they get it down? I, I don't know what the percentage is. Somebody's probably done, uh, done some cybermetric study and said bunt should be down X number of percentage. I don't know what that is, uh, but it's not as easy as people think it is when a guy's throwing 93 miles an hour and you're trying to bunt the ball. And you want to try to bunt it away from the pitcher. You know, it's not easy. At what point do you keep the bunt sign on with two strikes on a guy? Late in the game, we'll do that. When it's really, really important, if it's you know early or mid game, it's like okay, let's go hit. Go ahead. You're 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 more comfortable hitting, I'm sure. Not too many people are going to say, yeah, I want a bunt instead of hit. So we'll we'll let them swing with two strikes. But late in the game, it's what we call important time. We're going to make you bunt with two strikes. Have you ever incorporated the slash tactic where they show a pull back and, and choke oh, sure. up and swing? Would we, you do that here? We have that, uh, but, you know, at, at times it just doesn't work. The teams are good enough where they they smell it. They, you know, they know what's going on. But we you, you may see one occasionally, but it's something that, you know, you want to execute the ball. You want to execute properly. And if they see the, the slash coming, it could work against you.
tonight. Red jerseys, Zach Gallon on the mound. That was a not a very good recipe for success last season. 0 and 5 for him in the red jerseys here. What's going to happen to change the luck? Well, you know, like I said, he he's he's pitched in. We've hit poorly when he's pitched well, so it's up to us to score runs for Zach. And again, Zach's got the great mentality. You know, I'm I'm going to go out and do my job, and he's certainly not going to go into the dugout and start punching the guys who the hitters for not getting runs for him. He gets it. He understands that he's going to go out, come out here, try to get better, and. In many cases, statistics mean nothing. It's what the scouts see. So, and Jack gets that. He's 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 he gets it pretty well. You saw your good friend Chad Gasman before the game today. You saw other old friends here today. You said it's been a crazy day. Who else have you seen? Well, Andy Baylock came, the old UConn coach, through batting practice. And, of course, I see Coach Polk uh, at Hyannis. Uh, I've got friends in town. Former former player of mine, uh, Brian Levake and his family are here. Um, Brian coached with me in 1998 here, and he was a successful high school coach uh, for a long time. And now he's the superintendent of schools of the Montville schools, and he and his wife and family are in town. Old college teammate Bob Sheridan and his wife Ellen are here. Uh, you know, it's like Jesus. You know, what? holy mackerel. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's old home week or whatever. It's uh, some people know you have a house on Cape Cod. They're coming to visit, I guess. <laughs> For the ones that don't quite make it to the show all the way and still come back to see you, what kind of a sense does that give you? And to see that they're still coming back, and even though baseball may not have been their final path. They still remember your time here in the Cape Cod. It, it, that's special, and that's what we try to promote, the Chatham experience. Uh, the, the guys that do come back, and they come back religiously, and you know, or they text, or they Facebook, and that, that's really special. But when they come back, it's pretty cool, and I've had dozens of ex-players come back with their family and you know bring their kids back and they this is where daddy played ball and you know he tells his wife this is where I played baseball and uh, that's really cool and this is my coach and they, now they have children that are 15 17 years old that's how long I've been doing this so you know uh, it's uh that's rewarding is what it is and I always tell people one of the most rewarding things about coaching here was that five of my ex-players came back to get married in Chatham that says a lot that is a lie. And what, who were those five players? I, off the top of my head, I know, I know it's five. I know uh, David Bush, uh, Jeremy Cleveland. Oh God, let me think. I, I can't right now. Putting you on a spot. Yeah, it's okay. It one, but it, it, you know, it's pretty special. Well, you've got a game to manage. That's going to do it for us here on the Manager Show. Give a shout out to my guy Kyle Davis from SC. <laughs> miss him, miss him terribly. What a great guy, and uh, we'll just you know give him a give him a hello and best of luck to him. Well, we had a Paschke on the uh, catch of the day yesterday. Another something about the USC guys that just things get a little. Uh, there's some antics going on behind the camera with him. No way. I'm really shocked about that with those two knuckleheads. Yeah. The only thing missing is Ty Moore. <laughs> you just need it's just the West Coast. Something about us West Coasters, you know. Uh, there you go. <laughs> That's gonna do it for us here on the manager show. Johnny, take it away in the booth.